good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the open forum from uh, Digital Government in Mexico. The session is about to start. The session will be moderated by Mr. Victor Lagunes, head of the unit of uh, innovation and uh, technological strategy in the office of the president of Mexico. So, uh, Mr. Lagunes, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, I um, have the honor of serving as the head of IT strategy of innovation of the office of our president in Mexico. It's my pleasure to serve as the moderator of this session. Thank you, Israel. Um, welcome to the open forum on regional cooperation organized by a Latin American and Caribbean network for the development of e-government, what we call our Red Health. We have with us uh, Mrs. Yolanda Martinez Mancilla. She's uh, remotely connected. We're gonna be hearing her through these devices as we don't have connected the, the speakers. Um, we also have, uh, she's the, the head of digital government unit for the Ministry of Public Administration in Mexico. We also have uh, with us Mr. Marcelo Pagotti, Secretary of ICT at the Ministry of Planning, Development and Management of Brazil. Mr. Daniel Abadie, Under Secretary of Digital Government at the Ministry of Modernization of Argentina. This is Alejandra Erramuspe. Chief Communications Officer at AGESIC at the Office of the President of Uruguay, who is also a member of the IGF MAC and the LAC IGF Executive Committee. And Miguel Porrua, Head Specialist of Electronic Government at the Inter-American Development Bank. Um, also, we have Mr. Belisario Contreras from the OES SICTE Committee. It's an honor to have you here. First, we will have a uh, remote presentation um, about the Red Hulk by Mrs. Martinez. Please go ahead, Yolanda.
Thank you so much, Yolanda. Uh, let me just uh, highlight that it's 2.30 a.m. in the morning where Yolanda is at. And uh, if you know Yolanda, that you know that that's not an issue for her. And you, you, you heard her presentation in a very succinct and eloquent manner. So we thank you um, doubly, Yolanda, for your, for your input. Um, she, um, she presented the goals and successes of the Red Health. Continuing these efforts, let's move forward with the discussion of the Latin American experience in digital government by hearing the initial interventions of the three member countries and the, and the contributions of the collaborative work within the network framework. Let's start with Argentina, Mr. Abadie. In your opinion, what are the strengths of having a transversal organization for electronic government in the region and how does Argentina been part of this effort? Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Good morning, all. We are not so much, so we can get closer. Um, for us, from Argentina, it's extremely important to get in, you know, the, the region stronger. Uh, we see a huge opportunity for Latin American, Caribbean countries to develop strategies on digital government and making better services for the citizens, but also thinking in a regional way that in exchanging experiences. Argentina right now has assumed the presidency of the G20 and for the first time in the Digital Economy Task Force, we, we just add a track of digital government that wasn't, you know, in the previous G20 strategies because we feel that we had a lot to learn from government, trying to make government more efficient, more citizen-driven, and that's an opportunity that we can push through the G20 and making, you know, a Latin American Caribbean flavor into it. And that's an opportunity for us, for our region, to collaborate, to share software, share good cases, you know, of success, but also failures of learning from each other, learning and stop, you know, reinventing the wheel, which is a typical thing in government. So, said that, I guess uh, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to lear learn about my, my colleagues and try to then start a discussion with you here. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Abadie. Um, let's, not ask, let's now ask Mr. Perua from the IDB what are the challenges that the Latin American region has to promote digital government and how does your organization work with the Red Health to overcome them? He's, uh, he's also connected remotely. Yes, please go ahead. Excuse me, Mr. Porua, is it possible is it possible to get a little bit more volume on your side? Thank you. Yes, better, thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Perula. Um, Mr. Pagotti, in your opinion, does Brazil have a specific goal within the framework of the Red Hialc, and what kind of participation does your country have established with other states in its network? Thank you. Hello, good morning, everyone. So thank you, the, the Mexico government, to invite us to be here today. And Brazil is learning a lot with uh, Mexico, Argentina, Uruguay, how to deliver better services for the citizen community and how we speed up the process to deliver that service. You know, we cannot start from zero. We need to learn how, what you need to do, when you need to do, and see what do and don't that this country did in the past and try to share, try to be more collaborate with the, this, this country, you know, because in my opinion, the government need to transform to be as, as a provider of the service, you know, because in the future, we become the citizen decide where we to live or where you want to pay the tax. Because if a country close to Brazil, like Argentina, provide better services, like education, health, anything else, I, I, I believe the citizen can change your country and pay tax there and consume services there. So my opinion, the Brazilian government or the Brazilian state need, need to be prepared to offer better services in a short time. And, you know, I would say to be more collaborative and use the experience from this, this country. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Pagotti. Uh, Mrs. Ramuspe. <laughs> from the experience of Uruguay, how does Red Hell contribute to cooperation among the Latin America and the Caribbean countries, and how can these efforts add value to the multi-stakeholder forums such as IGF and the, and the LAC IGF? Thank you. First of all, I would like to say that I'm glad to be here and that we appreciate the invitation to participate in this panel. On behalf of Jose Klastornik, the director of the Agency of Electronic Government and Information Society of Uruguay, and Diana Parra, the most Uruguayan Colombian I know, responsible for the international relationship of the agency. Both of them work in this network every day, as you know. Uruguay has been working in the HEALC network since its creation in 2003. We had the honor of chairing the first committee when the governance of the network was defined for the first two years. We appreciate the recognition and trust all of you uh, gave to us. In the last me meeting of the Red HEAL held in Santo Domingo last month, one of the issues that stood out was the very existence of the network because as a network, it's probably one of the best networks in the world. Why? Because it is very active. In what sense is it active? It's active in the interpersonal relationship that exists between all directors, and it's active because there are many one-on-one -on -one cooperation through the existing cooperation mechanism. We are highly committed and have an active participation in all instances of the network in the studies, in the working groups, in the discussions. The second thing I would like to say is that the network is the opportunity to identify and get to know the offices responsible for the digital government in the region. Identify, know each other, and stay connected. And in that sense, a government changes, an authority changes, and the network, from the dynamic it has already established, contacts the new one and say, hi, I am here to help you in whatever you, you need in these issues. And for us, this is a second function that the network has. Engage the new ones so that we all help and situate them in the government regional context. This is a way, in addition, which the advances are not lost, that the process continues. We don't have established formal mechanism for this, but it works. The Red Hialc integrates the new ones into the conversation spaces, more or less formal, and hooks them. 
because among other things, the network returns if you don't know what your country was working, working on. Sometimes the help is not just to give continuity and make it an historical, but help to continue the maturation process in the country or on these issues. The network helps you to continue the process, sometimes make it available. In the network, we can share experience, think together in topics that are very new, that must be explored, how they are insert. Working with others is a plus. It is better than do it separately. Our countries aren't at the same level of maturity at the different issues. For that, according to our different levels, we help to others when we are most advanced in a specific subject, and perhaps the same country receive cooperation in another subject in which they are further behind. For these activities, this horizontal cooperation, we have a fund that uh, Beli Sario was talking about. Other thing is the punctual cooperation between two countries. These activities, these actions, we can uh, put in the stage one of the Red Gealc. They are the initial stages of the development process of this regional cooperation. The network, after 14 years, 2003, 2017, is already in another stage. We can no longer settle only to identify, contact, and coordinate. We are beginning to generate products from collaboration. In the last couple of years, we started to generate products together. For example, public software, Latin American versions of public software, lab versions. Chile, for example, had a simple BPM for process from uh, form for procedures put it on the table for us to evolve together. Uruguay defined using it for this initial phases of putting online services in the central administration of the government. When Uruguay takes it, it evolves, and it is put it in a regional community, and so, on, so everyone collaborate and change something, and we have a lot version. We are working in three public uh, software dot lab. Simple, another for emergencies, and another for electronic signatures. Public software is a regional product, a version that begins developing in a country and evolves among all, is improved collectively to better serve the needs of the region. Another way to have this kind of integrated product is, for example, the Open Data Group. Um, Shola said something about this. They choose a set of data that all countries will work on. They are working in data of gender violence in nowadays. The Open Data Group is also working on a maturity model of open data, a list of all the data that countries should be producing for their open data strategy. Another example is the digital government indicators strategy that uh, Shola uh, talked about this. The, we define 15 indicators in six dimensions of digital government. The six dimensions are public software, digital signature, digital services, interoperability, satisfaction, and use. Each country works in, in each dimension. We in, in, in Uruguay work in digitization of services. In 2017, we study, conceptualize, and test these indicators. And in, in 2018, we are planning to measure it. After this, we hope to have these indicators on the Red Health website, to have a section which we could call the region in numbers or something similar. Sum summarizing. The network is worth it and evolves. The network is very good in what normally a network is because beyond the changes, it has been sustained over the years, 14 years. Today, it has begun to evolve in the type of collaboration to generate regional goods and lab products. What have we achieved in this regard? Public software lab version, battery of indicators for e-government that we are all going to measure, we define data sets that have to be open. To finish, I would like to do a proposal for the future. Wouldn't it be convenient for us to take one more step and instead of being only the governments in the network, why don't we invite other stakeholders to join the conversation? Would it be convenient to promote the maturity that the network is already have, that the discussions on the e-government issues integrate other stakeholders? Uruguay, invite all the organizations here, technical community, uh, academia, civil society, private sector, 
to help us in this new challenge, to start a dialogue to help us to design the shape in which this involvement will be possible. We think in this way the Red Hell will be strengthening and move forward. I finish here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amispe. Thank you, Anna. Um, thank you for uh, all your valuable insight. In the spirit of the multi-stakeholder vision of the IGF, we shall open the microphone to our participants uh, to add to the discussion and the inputs from the organizations and sectors. Uh, we have um, the good and, and honorable presence here also of, of Mr. Belisario and Oscar Robles. Um, there's one hand also um, in here. I would like to ask first, if you allow me, Mr. Belisario Contreras to, uh, to share with us his insight. Um, he is the Cybersecurity Program Manager for the, of the Secretariat of the Inter-American Committee Against Terrorism of the OAS. Thank you, thank you, Victor, and thank you, Yolanda, for, for, the, for the kind invitation. Although, yes, although I'm, I'm with the Secret Secretariat, of course, uh, I'm glad to say that, uh, that the Technical Secretariat of the, of the Red Hell is hosted at the, at the General Secretariat of the Organization of American States, and our colleagues Maria Fernanda Trigo and, and Mike Mora uh, are doing an uh, outstanding job. Actually, my colleague Miguel Porrua was doing so standing job there that the IDB had to hijack him, and now he's working with the with the IDB. But, but well, we hope that that they don't hijack neither Maria Fernanda nor, nor Mike. Um, I just want to 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 add a couple of thoughts. What you already or most of you already said is actually to understand the present and, and maybe actions for the future is is go a little bit back to the past. Uh, the, f from the OAS perspective and actually the internal perspective, I need to tell you uh, that I agree that the, the Red Hell is, is perceived as a successful network. Uh, from the cybersecurity group or from the cybersecurity side, actually we have cooperated with, for, for several years with, with you and participated in, 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 in several meetings and several initiatives actually, which are, are the most important. Uh, and this is, uh, the results are actually, uh, and actually the success that, for example, that, that Mexico is having today uh, as chair is actually thanks in, in big part to the architects of, of this network since 2003, uh, the governments of Uruguay, and of course, uh, the sponsors of, the, of, of this initiative at the OAS, at the IDB, at the governments of Canada, which uh, would have been impossible to, to build what we have today almost 15, 15 years later. Um, my colleague uh, Miguel uh, from the IDB, uh, I, I, w I, want, I want to say that I disagree with a couple of things that he said that there are no resources. I think the IDB has resources to, 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 to put in, in the countries. He said that he put seven loans this year. And I think the IDB actually could actually put more money in, in countries with all, all due respect. And, and actually that's a, an important role that maybe for, for the bank. And, and another opportunity maybe to think in the present and, 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 and the future is actually uh, some of the points taking actually what, what Miguel was saying, uh, cooperation, collaboration, standards, interoperability. Uh, those are the things that you can reach consensus uh, at the political level in an organization such as, as the OAS. And, and that actually could be, that's the beauty of the inter-American system and, and, and of sisters of organizations. When you, when you join the political consensus and actually the financial and the technical cooperation. And then thinking on the future, uh, I don't think the governments need to be shy or afraid to, to, to invest on this. I think there are really good success experiences. We were looking this year, the, the, 10, the, the anniversary of the 10 years of, of AGESIC in Uruguay, really success stories in Mexico, uh, countries like Colombia, and others, uh, uh, and, and another country um, uh, around the hemisphere. So uh, our invitation is actually to, to foster uh, the, the digital development, and the government, the digital di development. And of course, uh, from our perspective, as you think on this digital development uh, and, and the promotion of e-government services uh, 
to, to all the citizens of the Americas, uh, think on how to secure uh, and, and promote a, a secure cyberspace to them. Uh, that needs to be uh, thought since the beginning um, from our side, both uh, the OEAs, the IDB, and other international uh, organizations, private sector actors, civil society, and technical community, we are really working on this. And actually, we welcome that the Red Heal is actually uh, thinking on expanding the, the participation of, of other members. So uh, from, from the political side, I, I think that would be very, very welcome, uh, I would say, from, from the technical secretary perspective. Uh, again, I, I, I totally agree with the final comment from, from our colleague from, from Uruguay. Uh, the Red Heal has been uh, maybe one of the most successful networks, uh, has been able to maintain, to prove results, uh, but it's responsibility of its members to continue strengthening, to continue fostering, uh, but that is only will be possible producing more results, more products, and showing it to, to the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Contreras. Uh, Mr. Oscar Robles from LACNIC, you have the floor. Thank you. Thanks uh, for the invitation. and. Uh, our point of view as uh, uh, the uh, regional internet registry of Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, we have um, um, usually contact with all these um, e-government initiatives in the, in the region. And uh, we've seen that uh, even if the country has many challenges uh, to be uh, um, as competitive as, as, they want, as they would like to, uh, the e-government initiatives are very um, uh, important uh, for this competitiveness. And uh, sometimes uh, they are the ones that are driving that uh, um, um, growth of, uh, of the country in this uh, competitive world. So um, uh, the, the internet is supposed to be uh, a tool for um, delivering better services to the, to the society. To, it's supposed to be a um, tool for governments to help do their job. Uh, but uh, the developing uh, countries have uh, many uh, challenges. And uh, one of those challenges is that the society is not uh, the 50% that is able to be connected. That uh, society is not uh, the ones, the lucky ones to be a business case for telecom operators to uh, deliver uh, network services. Um, so society is the other uh, 50% uh, also. Um, uh, the, the ones that, ha that have the disadvantage uh, to be isolated for many reasons that could be uh, geographically isolated uh, for age uh, isolation, for gender, for language, for education, infrastructure, um, physically challenged, uh, visually impaired, um, uh, and along, etc. So governments, uh, and uh, especially uh, e-government uh, initiatives, should try to engage uh, with many local actors to uh, connect that other 50% to actually uh, deliver services to the whole society. Um, Multi-stakeholderism is the answer um, for, for, for those purposes. Um, uh, society should not be uh, just uh, waiting for government to deliver uh, uh, access to, to, to remote uh, places and uh, for all those uh, isolation, uh, isolated um, communities. But uh, uh, government certainly can do the job to uh, bring many actors to the table and discuss uh, many solutions, ones that could be a business case for telecom operators, ones that could be part of the government uh, initiatives to deliver inter, um, uh, inter, uh, internet access, uh, those uh, initiati initiatives that may be covered by um, uh, um, rural communities, um, uh, initiatives for interconnection, and uh, so many other kind of solutions that could be carried out by many uh, actors uh, locally. LACNIC has um, uh, supported an initiative uh, from uh, Argentina for a couple of years ago, which is called uh, a Libre Router, uh, which is a solution uh, by the society, by the community, 
uh, where the uh, operators have no business case, so they find a solution to uh, interconnect many, uh, many um, uh, separated uh, small communities in Argentina, in, in, the, in the fields, uh, in, the, uh, in the mainland, not in the traditional cities, uh, and uh, to find a sustainable solution with um, uh, cheap equipment, a $100 uh, equipment with um, um, uh, free, free software or open, open software. So uh, this is the kind of solutions that uh, we think the uh, governments may um, help to deliver to the rest of the population that uh, has not the, the chance to be connected in, and in that way to deliver better services to the rest of the uh, community that is not able to be connected at this moment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Robles. Um, we'd like to accept the, the, the input for our colleague. If you would like to um, in, say your name and uh, your organization. Yeah, um, uh, Mr. Um, Eftekharsha, <coughs> Mr. Eftekharsha from Ministry of IT, uh, Government of Pakistan. Thank you very much for detailed um, uh, discussions and the valuable input on the e-government. Uh, basically, the government of Pakistan is implementing the e-government in the country. Uh, we are well versed in government-to-government uh, -government, uh, initiatives, uh, and we are uh, struggling and taking initiative on the government to citizens. Uh, however, we observed uh, that the implementation of e-government, uh, particularly in, in developing country, is a socio-technical challenges. And your uh, the recent and past research uh, is the evidence for the, this uh, uh, this point. Uh, basically, uh, e-government is uh, one of the key initiatives uh, to uh, uh, to take uh, leads to for the digitization, and it also lead to for the data open data concepts. Uh, it also uh, give efficient and uh, effective way to promote the uh, provision of digital services to their citizens. Uh, however, it is observed that uh, uh, international organizations, including ICANN, I I IGF, ITU, IGF, are uh, focusing on the e-government, but, but the, the, the ma major focus of these international organizations are, are, are on, on the other parts, like uh, in ICANN is the domain name system, IGF is working for the internet uh, governance. So uh, 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 my suggestion is that uh, this is a fast and efficient way that the, go, uh, the countries of the world, uh, particularly the countries who are well versed in the e-government, uh, they can share their experiences and, uh, uh, and, and the practical in terms of G2G and uh, in terms of G2C services, in terms of e-government, maybe, maybe have a centralized repository. And, uh, and there should be a dedicated uh, uh, forum for the e-government, like uh, uh, there are forum for the internet governance, for, uh, there are forum for the uh, domain name system. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'd like to open the floor for questions or further discussion, if necessary. Ambassador, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, your presentations and uh, sharing with us uh, the work, the, this uh, very important effort in this uh, uh, network. Uh, I, I was, uh, this, I think that this is a very good example of uh, the, um, the, um, the are a very successful and uh, uh, productive uh, regional cooperation and uh, that uh, with tangible results and uh, of course, it's, it's also remind us the, the importance of using these uh, uh, important tools, uh, technolo technological tools of internet uh, for providing better services and, and to be, let's say, closer to the people. And uh, in being the people in the center of this effort, I was wondering if you could um, comment or to share some uh, comments on uh, the, the public reaction and to these efforts and, uh, and if there is any particular fields where you perceive that the, the public, the people, uh, have uh, noticed or have a, a reaction in a positive way to these efforts that finally are directed to them uh, as, a, as, as your main customers, I, I may say. So thank you again for, for the presentations. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Um, Additional inputs? 
So with that, then I would like to, um, to summarize and close the session for today, thanking you first for all your inputs. Um, I think the efforts and the successes are already very, very tangible. Uh, the, the network's been deployed over the last years and been strengthened um, are, be, are, are proving the, the, the results in a very valuable way. Um, not only we um, shared in here what we are missing yet, for example, some countries with no digital strategies yet, or understanding that there's some talent that needs to be filled in terms of, for example, cybersecurity uh, positions and so on, um, but mainly into strengthening and continued collaboration amongst all of the countries, not only regional but internationally, uh, to be able to deploy infrastructure, to be able to deploy digital services um, agendas and uh, to allow the citizen to, of course, find their solutions themselves. And what I, one of the lines that I like from here uh, very much is if we do um, um, offer access to digital services and technology to the citizens, they can actually change governments and change our countries for the better. So thank you so much for your presence here, for your inputs, and continuing your efforts within the digitizations of the planet and also uh, regionally and locally.